everyone, and welcome to another K6 Office Hours. I am Nicole van der Hooven, and today I have two guests. One of them may already be familiar to you, Paul Baylog. Hey, everyone. <laughs> and our special guest is Tim Hasselars. Tim, would Hello. you like to introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, hi, nice, Nicole. Hi, nice to meet you, Nicole and Paul. Um, I am Tim Hasselars. I'm a Belgium, living in Belgium. Um, I'm a product manager and I work at a marketing automation company called Cellgent. Uh, I have a passion for APIs. I love music. I'm a DJ as well in my spare time. Um, oh, nice. And if I still have some spare time left, I like to contribute to a number of open source projects, which uh, the Postman 2K6 is one of the projects I, I've been working on together with the K6 uh, team in the past. So that's a bit of why I'm here today. So nice to meet you both. Yeah, that's a pretty big if, though. If you have time, you're a DJ. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hobby thing, but I'm really proud of it, actually, because I've been playing a lot. And there's one festival in, in Europe, Tomorrowland, and I've been playing there each year oh, for the wow. last, last 10 years. So I'm, it's a small stage, but I'm really proud of it. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, that is awesome. You should be proud of that. <laughs> yeah. I think that kind of makes sense because product management is such a multidisciplinary role as well. Like it's not all technical and it's not all people skills. It's it's a mixture of both and a lot of other things. Yeah, that's also what keeps it interesting, at least for me, what keeps it interesting actually. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what do you, what do you typically do in, in your current job? And what does it have to do with K6? Okay, in my current job, um, I'm a product manager. So we have a, a digital platform, a autom marketing automation platform, and I'm spearheading the API renewal program. So we have a number of APIs in our company, which customers use to connect and exchange data with, our, with marketing data. And we're renewing that and performance is critical because we have a number of really big customers uh, in Europe, like uh, UEFA or Hunkemo, the, the Dutch uh, lingerie brand. And we talk about huge volume, so our APIs has to be scalable and performant, and we use K6 to, to guarantee that we, we keep them up to standard, actually. So that's what we do. And my role there is to make sure the teams, I, I help with the API design, and, and I check with the teams, and I document stuff together with the teams that we try to do that. So what, what I'm going to talk about is also my experience with K6 and the way we use that company a bit more. Awesome. Cool. So how did you first start? What made you start to use K6? Did you try other things before that? Yes. Um, <laughs> in, in a previous previous job, a couple of years ago, I was working at the hosting company uh, and they were doing a, there was a, a, an anniversary of the national lottery. It's like the, the lottery company. So it had, they expected a lot of visitors to the website and we wanted to make sure that the hosting was up to par and it was able to handle the volumes. and I tried to test it, performance test it, load test it, and uh, I used JMeter, and the experience was, uh, I, I struggled a lot with it. And I was sort of browsing for another solution, and then I hit, uh, I found K6. And the JavaScript syntax was really nice. You could really, really get quickly started with the nice documentation. And that's how I rolled into K6. And then I shifted jobs, and at the current job, I said, uh, we have to use K6 because it's so much easier than using JMeter. You can script it, you can automate it, and that's that's yeah. I use it once and never look back. <laughs> it's nice. With the automation, did you put hook that into your uh, CI CD pipeline as well? Yes, we do. Uh, I can like I have a diagram. Like I, I'm, I'm really proud of it. Maybe I'm a bit how do you say um, biased by it, but I'm I'm really proud of what we've achieved with the automation aspect actually. And we we, we came from far away from far from uh, far place. But now we, we have a nice automated flow, actually. That's which awesome. I hope I can showcase a bit later on uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the talk. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it. And do you use K6 Cloud or K6 OSS? Um, we, we had used Cloud in the past. I think right now I'm, I, my team are mostly using the OSS uh, version of it. Um, I don't know why. I have to check with them actually, but I think we, we had a number of uh, Grafana dashboards set up and they were a bit tailored to what we need or what I needed at least. And that's why I think we stick with, or for now we stick with the OSS version of uh, K6. 
Okay, awesome. Yeah. So I, I guess people might be wondering, seeing the title of this video, what Postman has to do with either Celligent or K6. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, th that's a bit the story I want to tell. Um, how did we end up with K6 and, and the whole story? Um, so what typically happens if you start developing an API is you build your API and then you want to test it. You want to play around with it. You want to experiment with it. And the first thing that you do as a non-technical user like I, I take, I take Postman. Postman is, a, is an, an application where you can model your requests in a, in a nice GUI, and then you can just fire them. You don't have to write a curl script or you don't have to use any CLI tool. It's a GUI for making API calls. So that was the logical step. So we build an API. I want to experiment with it, play around with it. So we, we ended up with using Postman for it. Um, but maintaining Postman is, 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 is not so easy when you go for automation flows. And, and then when you want to take a step further, if you want to do performance tests, that's another thing. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's why I think we went from what we did to Postman just as an experimentation as a first phase. But sooner, the more endpoints we have, the more we wanted to test and the more we want to play around with it, the bigger everything became. So that's why, yeah, we, we wanted to make it an automation level and make it a bit more streamlined so that the manual work would go down a lot. It sounds like you have a fan out in the, uh, the viewers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like to make things visual, so, <laughs> so I, I, because it helps me Great. visualize my yeah. thoughts and everything. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, so way. I I've used Postman before. I think it's almost ubiquitous now for anyone who's doing any sort of API testing. I think at some point uh, people would have used Postman just because it is very easy to get started. But I do. I have also run across some of the issues that you describe when you're scaling up, when you have a very complex um, test suite or you want to have one. Uh, it is, I think I st personally still like the scripting approach of being able to have the full, you know, being able to have condition loops and, and that sort of thing. There's still a lot more flexibility when, when you're just dealing with pure code. But I know yeah. that, I think it was, I mean, relatively recently, when I started using Postman, it was just firing off requests, but and it was like a single user kind of thing. But what are the features available for performance testing for Postman? You alluded to it, them, and you said that maybe they're not, they weren't exactly what you were looking for. No, no. Maybe I should quickly show a bit how how I, yeah, sure. how I work with it, if that's okay for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna showcase my uh, so well, just for, uh, as a reference i created a fake endpoint and i, I was set up a postman collection so what you do typically in postman is you have an api that you define in our case i i created a, a k6 office hour crm api just plain and simple where you awesome. could see yeah you could see some context you you potentially want the interview in the future and you model them. So you have your endpoint, you just put them in, you say it's a get, post, put, whatever you need, and then you can just fire it and it responds an instant. So this is an actual API request happening behind the scenes. That's really nice because as a, as a, as a non-technical user, you don't have to have any technical expertise. You just enter the endpoint, press send, and you're up and running. But it also has some nice features if you want to make complex things, um, like you said, Nicole, if you want to use variables because um, you might want to experiment with your API endpoints in different environments. So you can use variables. That's what they use with the curly brackets here. So it's a base URL, so I can shift around. So if I want to switch, I have potentially two environments. I have a production one and a dev one. I can easily switch between them and then the variables will also switch along. That, that's a really nice thing to do with Postman. The next thing what I really like about Postman is that um, you can use it to create CRUD and you can even create flows with it. Um, so it's really straightforward. So if you say, I want to create one item and then I want to use the item in my detailed call and in my, so I have a, all leads, I create a lead and I want to get the lead. So that's the, this is the endpoint. You could just define it as a variable. You could say, I want to, that this lead ID can be used to fetch the right lead ID. So um, 
if you create one, that's the body, I do a post request. And what happens is you get a new ID back, which is unique because I just created a new contact in our CRM application. And you can use scripting in Postman to say, ah, there is a, a data response and I'm gonna store that response in my lead ID variable. So it allows some scripting within a GUI, which is really nice. And it also allows you to define tests. Uh, like I want to check what's the response. It should be a 200. You can define a Postman test. They use a bit of uh, assertion kind of syntax for that. So what started out as something really straightforward, I wanted to just test and play around with it, experiment with the endpoints. It became much more and we started building like a full suite out of Postman in Postman itself, a test suite. And that's really cool because as a non-technical user, you could just share this collection with anybody in the team and they could just run the same request and, and have explained playing around with it. You can even pass it on to partners or, or colleagues or customers when they say, when they want to use your API, you can just say, ah, oh, you can you can use a Postman collection to play around with it. And another nice thing about Postman is that you can run scenarios, like I said, uh, and you can run them at scale. So right now I'm doing get leads, creating a lead, then I'm gonna fetch the lead that I just created. So I'm created Elon Musk as a user. I can update that one as well. So I can put a body and touch and I can even delete it. So if I would run this in a cycle, I would test actually the whole flow of the a typical CRUD operation. You can fetch one, create one, update one, delete one, and then it's back to normal again. And so Tim, when we talk about, yeah, sorry. Sorry, oh. uh, I just wanted to, sorry to interrupt, but would would it be possible to try and zoom he, in this one to see if you can make it a, just a little bit bigger? Okay, something like that? Yeah, yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, so, sorry. No, no, no worries. Um, so what you can do in Postman is if we talk about test automation, you can just say, I want to run all these, these, these API requests in a sequence, like they're, they're organized here and you can just run them. So if you run them, you see you, you've put in some tests. Ah, this one is a success, success, uh, creation successful. And so you're actually testing if your API is responding as you expected, but you cannot test it at scale or at, at high volume. The only thing you could do in, in Postman is if, if I press run, I could define a number of iterations. So if I would say I want to do 10 iterations, I'm just gonna run them now so you can see. You can see it just creates blocks, it becomes green, but while I'm talking, it, it took to run all these 10, uh, five times 10 requests, it took me, let's say one minute to run. So you cannot really test it at scale if uh, that's not the use case of Postman. The use case of Postman is to experiment with request, do some testing on, some validation if the response and the input are okay. And that's about it. So I needed something more if you want to do that scale. So while I discovered K6, K6 has this nice scripting language. You could define- Tim, define before you, yeah. sorry, before you move on, we do have a, a question. Chaitra okay. asks, can you share this collection, please? Just to get along with Postman. Okay. Is I'll... there is there a way that you could share, make that public or something? Uh, you can, I haven't tried it, but I guess if I click share and I could, can I create a via JSON link maybe? Get JSON link, uh, update link, maybe like that. I haven't tried this actually before either, so. Awesome, um, we're learning in public. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, should I put it in the comments or how that, that, would I do that? Yeah, sure. That would be well, great. Yeah, um, otherwise I was going to say we could probably put something together too for uh, after, you know, the presentation if someone yeah. wants to access that, you know, uh, if, you, yeah. if there's no issue with that. No. Um, okay, I'll I'll do, put that in the comments. Whoops. Yeah. Um, so um, I was asked as well for, from the K6 uh, team to update their blog post about Postman and K6. So what I'm going to do after this session is I'm going to review the blog post that they have already on the website, and then update it with maybe some content that, that I'm talking about in, in this uh, show here. 
Great. And we also okay. got a comment from Jim Munro, who says Postman is definitely not designed for load testing. No, no, no. And yeah, that, so it seemed the, like yeah, it seemed on. like you could only do iterations. Is that right? You can't set you can't have more threads or users. No, that's it. So the okay. only thing you can do is you can run a sequence and you can run it in a number of iterations, but you can you can't define how many users you can't define how long iteration. You can define a sleep, but that's difficult. So Postman is great for what it is. It's great for uh, testing some of your contracts of your APIs. It's, it's great for experimenting with your API and, and really kickstart using your API. But if you want to do it volume, uh, uh, to test the volume at scale, I wouldn't recommend Postman at all. But th that's also a bit uh, the problem because you already spent a lot of time making a nice collection, preparing it, grooming it, updating it all the time. If you then want to go to K6, you would have to rewrite everything. So if you, this is how K6 syntax looks. Uh, so you can define your iterations. Yeah, you know this better than me actually. Uh, and you can just use a get request and you can script your request. You can also check it. So that's the same as you would do in the Postman where you test your response. You could check if it's a 200. But if you have a complex scripts, you can it become they become really large to maintain and to, to keep them up to date. And that's what I struggled with because it felt like I'm reinventing the wheel. So if I, I made a diagram out of it just to explain it. So if you have an API and you have to update it, you would have to really update your collection and say every time something changes, an endpoint was added or a property was changed, you needed to update, go into the Postman collection, manually correct everything, extend it and and yeah, keep it up to date. But if you go to K6, you have twice the work actually. You would have your API that's changing. So you need to update your collection. You need to update your K6 scripts. So if you have five endpoints, that's doable. But if you have 20 endpoints for one API, that's a lot of work to keep them in sync because this is a moving target, but it forces you to keep in sync two other moving targets because you want to be able to experiment and test them, the contracts, and you also want to test them at scale with the load. And I was looking really for a way, like how can I leverage this nicely prepared Postman collection and use it for K6 scripts? Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I, when I ended up with, with, with this scenario where you have your API, I update my Postman collection, I want to generate a K6 script. And I was looking around like, how can I do that? And I found on the K6 website, I found um, some blog items on, on how that they provided an Postman to K6 converter. And that really triggered me. And I started playing around with it. Um, and I really, really liked it. So it gives me all the flexibility of modeling everything in Postman, preparing the whole flow. So if I, if, if I want to run it in sequence, I could do that. But then it also converted it into a K6 script where I had no maintenance on. So, and that was really nice. And when I found the, the Postman to K6 package, like a, a year ago or something, the purpose of that was to kickstart your K6 experience. And I said, but you can do much more with it. You could even fully automate it with some parameters because the first time I converted my collection, it had like 20 endpoints. I still needed to do add some, some, some minor things. I needed to add some K6 specific stuff to it. Uh, like um, how many iterations do I want to do? Um, is there certain parameters I want to add that are not by default converted over? So I said, okay, what can I do to make it even better? And that I don't have to touch the K6 script anymore. So the first time that you converted it, I had to modify it still. So each time that I, that I would do this kind of a behavior, the API changes, I need to update my Postman collection and I needed to update my K6 script. I want to, my ideal world would be, I don't have to touch the K6 script at all. I just convert it and I was able to run it in, in one go. Uh, and I can, I can show you how, how it works because it's really straightforward in the end. So yeah. if you, ex uh, if it's okay, you can export your collection. Yeah, sure. Uh, so if you do export, you can just say export and you, you download a JSON file and you can do the same thing with your environments. So if you want to have your test or dev environment and you want to also convert them, you can because you can also export these from Postman. And what you end up with, um, I'm going to, close this one, you end up with two JSON files. So you, as you can see, it's the K6 office hours. It has 
um, of some, some, some syntax in it, like the test scripts are there, the endpoints are there, the, the way you connect to them. So all the, the request information is in this configuration. In the environment file, you can find all your variables that you have defined. So uh, let me just now showcase it. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna, this one. Um, so, so if you run the Postman 2K6 converter, it expects actually two things. You define an input, my Postman collection, and you define an output. So if I would run this, just closely watch what happens there. It, it does some things behind the scenes. And once it's finished, you would get actually, if things go well, let's see if it's there, you would get this. You would get- That was fast. Yeah, that, that's the goal of a CLI. <laughs> it should be fast. <laughs> uh, you get the K6 script. I'm gonna go over that later on. And you get this library folder. Um, the library folder, what, what it is, is because the converter, Postman uses number of functions, some methods that are, are not mapping exactly towards K6. So when uh, this package, it, it adds some additional functionality that Postman uses, like it uses Lodash and some encryption stuff like that. And it just adds the libraries there. So if you would do this manually, you would also have to include the libraries, but it does it for you. It includes all the libraries and it is actually a wrapper around um, the, let's go for the shim quickly. If I'm, if it's not clear what I'm trying to explain, stop me, Nicole. Uh, uh, yeah, there, we we can also answer this question from Carlos Ramirez. You can also integrate. Well, not a question, a comment. You can also integrate your process using the Postman API key to request information about your collection and environment. And Correct. he, and he also adds. Uh, oh, no, sorry, this is from Chaitra Nanjesh. This is interesting because we use K6 in Tesco, uh, says load test. And I think we can try this to see if it works for us. So people yeah. are already liking what you're sharing, Tim. Yeah, that's the goal. Um, that, that's also why I liked it, actually. <laughs> uh, just, just for So do you also so do what Carlos was, was suggesting? Yes. Uh, and. I even go a step further, but that's, I'm going to come back to that later. Okay, uh, great. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to showcase how we do the, the full Monty in the end, actually. I'm building up awesome. the story. <laughs> Sorry, people uh, are excited. Yeah, but I'm also excited. So I, I hope that I'm, I'm coming across properly. <laughs> um, You're doing great, don't definitely. worry. Okay. Um, just for reference, so you, you have to think of this Postman 2K6 thing as it's wrapping Postman functions and, and K6 functions and combining them in one place so that it's, it, it's abstracting away the K6 part and it, it, it matches with the Postman stuff. So that's what it does behind the scenes. Uh, so if you see, if I if you do execute request, which is an, it's a, it's a JavaScript function actually, behind the scenes, scenes it just does the HTTP.request, which is a K6 function. Um, so it, it wraps a lot of things together. And I think if I would go to execute test, uh, you would also see it uses the K6 check function. Just just for reference, this is the wrapping part. Uh, this is all not so relevant. You don't have to care about it. What's relevant is what's being generated from, from for you. So it says on the top, it's an auto-generated file here. It does some imports. It imports also K6 uh, related items and it sets default options. By default, it says maximum redirects. And then it does some strange things which are not K6 related, but that's typically what the package does. That's the wrapper that you see. It defines a collection with a base URL. And then you will see that my group is there. I have my request, get all leads. It showcases the URL. It showcases that it does a test here. So everything that you had defined in your Postman collection, sorry, here, everything that that's you would okay. see with get all tests and you could see the test here. It's, it's translated into a K6 kind of syntax and it's ready to be used. And you see all the requests are in here, all ready to be used. It even matches uh, response codes that you can match to a variable in Postman. You could do, you could do any more, uh, anything. The body is there that I inserted that you can create. 
So if I would now just say K6, oh, sorry, K6 run, K6 script. Oh, I wanna know why this is happening. Give it a second to start up. There you go. Cool. It's just, so I haven't touched anything. I just took my Postman collection, converted it with the converter that 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 uh, that we we built a while ago together with K6. And then you can see the tests they are there. So I created a number of tests. Postman expects to uh, the response is expected to be two hundred. I get all the data, my averages, my group duration because you also have a group there. So if you have 20 endpoints, you will test 20 endpoints, but I don't need to write any K6. So I only do my maintenance for my, my, my maintenance only happens in here. I only have to maintain my Postman collection and my K6 gets generated out of them. So that's the really nice thing here. Yeah, that's the, the library that we're using. Very no, nice. that's, not, that's not my library actually. I think it's moved to... Um, uh oh. Yeah. Oops. Uh -oh. <laughs> Which is the right one? Yeah. Yeah. We got to update our show notes. <laughs> yeah. yeah this is, we this do. Is the one. Yeah. This is the oh, one. Oh, it's the uh... API deck one. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. No, no worries. I think I made a pull request a while ago. So. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. I will. I will update the the description. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but I, just to continue. Can you also and, post Tim the the link? Yeah, I'll post it, of course. Uh, Thanks. But it's it's really cool. I, it's not really cool. It's not the right word because the package supports a number of things, so that you can even tweak the output even further. So by default, I I just say give me the Postman collection and generate the K6 and it would work. But if you want to automate this on a higher level and you do workflow automation, you wanted to tweak some things. Maybe I want to play around with some K6 parameters or I wanted to do something else or I want to exclude stuff or I want to include my environment because if you see here, there is no, there's only my base URL, but I have a lot of variables I want to use in my Postman collection that are defined. I have a login information. I have some, um, some also my base URL. So I, you can take it even further because now you just get a script, but it's just a, the, the script with all the requests. And so you can take it a step further. So for example, if you would say, I want to increase the number of iterations, you could just say it like this. You have this parameter says iterations 10. I'm not going to convert it. There we go. And if you see my script now has options already set to 10. That's nice. That's handy because you want to automate this, of course. And you can even go just take it a step further. I want to include my uh, Postman environment variables. So I'm going to, there's also a parameter for that. So you can pass on environment variables. You can even pass on global variables. This is typically Postman, but you can just take the ones that Postman provides, export them and use them. So if I now do this kind of thing, so this is my file with my Postman variables, like I showed, I say, Let's do this again. And here you'll see all my variables that were exposed in my environment are now available for my K6 script to be used in automation workflows. So that's really nice. Uh, but I can even take it a step further. What if I have some special K6 related parameters? I'm just gonna copy paste them here for the sake of the demo. But I might want to define my iterations or my maximum redirects because K6 offers a lot of parameter options. Like I want to use cookies, I want to use headers, the number of redirects, I want to set some tags, I want to define a timeout. All these K6 related parameters, I wanted to make sure that my automation flow was able to process them because I want to run the script without touching it. So I want to be able to just say, take these parameters for this pipeline, these parameters are applicable for production. So you could really switch environments, for example, uh, what we do is we have different test scenarios defined. So if we go for a, a small test, we run it like this. We define stages and thresholds. But if we want, we want to really do performance testing, we have different ones. So these options, we use them to, to pass them along to the pipeline. So I could do something 
again with the generation part. Uh, yes, Question only, from Sri. Yes. Is it one environment at a time only? Yes, because when you, what you generate is what you inject in the script. So it, you would then have to generate a second script, but that's really easy to do because you would just say, uh, I want to have, um, for example, I'm just showcasing it here. I'm gonna take this script is for the second test stage. You just run it and then you get a second script next to it. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't think about one script. You just fork it as much as you need with the different configuration options defined that you would use. Yeah, and Sri, I, I wanted to also add here that with K6, you can have, you can test more than one environment at a time. What Tim is showing here is that for, because of the way that the po but that Postman treats yeah. these collections separately, every environment is separate. And so the converter also converts them to separate K6 scripts. However, once they're in K6 script format, once it's all JavaScript, you could use um, K6 ex executors and scenarios to run them simultaneously if that's what you'd prefer or, or anything else. So in this example, what I'm doing, I'm going to pass on my K6, my K6 parameters as a JSON file so that I can put them in a uh, hit somewhere. And if I then just say press go, you will see that it also just updates this options part on the top. There we go. So you will see I've defined it to be, um, in this case, for five virtual users, 10 iterations, maximum redirects. It just adds it on top. So I can switch around in my pipeline without touching anything. I just prepare everything. And then it's just a matter of defining which command I should run. And it just does it for me. So that's really handy. And it, it really makes automation a lot easier in that regard. And um, there's one thing I really like. It's a small, uh, small thing, actually. Um, now it generates one big file. So everything is in this one big file, all the requests. That's It's doable if you have like me, for example, four requests or five requests. But if you have like 20 endpoints or 20 requests, it's a huge file. Um, and to, to handle that, you can just pass along one parameter. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's commonly used a lot, but I, I, I'm a big fan of it. It's called a separate parameter. So what happens now? The options are there, the request uh, configuration is there, but you just get this in your K6 script. Um, I'm not sure which one, I, I'm gonna remove one because otherwise I might get confused uh, quickly. There we go. You get this and this is actually, it splits all your requests in, in a separate folder, like you would see them in Postman and each request would be separated from the rest. And that makes it really easy. If you want to test something specifically, if you would have one script, it would run everything. But now I can just comment out. I don't want to do the create. I don't want to do the update or the delete. I only want to test to get all these. You just say K6, K6 run, K6 script. Give it a second to warm up. There you go. It will only test that request that I defined. So if you have 20 endpoints, your K6 script that's been generated for you will have 20 lines and all your requests will be nicely separated from each other. So you can even say, I, I want to tweak it a bit or you, you have all flexibility then. Well, if you don't use a separate parameter, it just generates one file with everything in it. Um, okay. Does it, does it, do I make sense still? Yes, you do. But uh, there's a comment here from one of our engineers who wrote that initial blog post that <laughs> that you may be updating. Mustafa said last time he wrote an article about it, it needed a few changes to make things work. So well done. Yeah. Yes, that was that was one of my first PRs that I did. I, I wanted to make a separate flow cover pretty much everything. Uh, and there's one final thing I want to showcase for with the, the K6 part is now you have to really like you, all these parameters, they become very long and difficult. You could also just define them as a JSON file and just pass them along. And now you can just define one file, put them in Git. 
And then you could just say, I want this as the output, my environment. You can even define that it uses a handle summary or you can add request tagging on top of it. And if you do it like that, you get, uh, you just have to do one parameter or run one command actually. So if I do it like this, you see, it just says, this is my input file. I'm going to have defined an options file, which I referred to. And if I then just do it, it would take all these parameters that I've defined and you would get again, everything nicely uh, generated for you. All the requests are there. And uh, it even had it added the handle summary thing on top of that, which is uh, something oh, really nice. interesting. Yeah. So everything is there. And so this is the automation flow that, that's really powerful because otherwise you would have to add, if you want to have a summary, you had to add and modify the file. But now I just define one configuration file. I define my parameters, I define whatever I need, just run it and my script. I don't need to touch it. I can just say K6 run K6 script. And you would see that it generates, um, yeah, it generates the tests. It does, I think, five or 10 iterations. There we go. And it doesn't output anymore. It generates the JSON file. It thinks, if I close my quickly here, you would see the summary report is here. So it, it, it just, yeah, there's no manual work anymore to run K6. Just keep your Postman collection up to date. And you're helping folks out with your example here. So yeah, okay, great. Okay. Th that's in summary the the things that 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 uh, I want to showcase about the converter. Um, there are some some nice things to added uh, since the the last releases from the K6 team. So I added some pull requests and changed some things, uh, and I really I'm really happy with it. I it works flawless at the moment in our org or organization actually. So I'm really happy with it. Yeah, it, it seems really, it, I think I tried this initially, like when Mustafa was saying there are a few things that you, you had to get done, but this seems way, way slicker. And it seems like you've really focused on making it automatic so that you don't, there is no manual intervention, which totally makes sense in a CI CD pipeline. Yes, correct. And I, I, want to, I wanted to put my effort on the postman and the management of the postman collection because that was a tool where we were all working on and maintaining it. And I wanted to keep the workload on K6 as low as possible. And I think I, I we succeeded quite well on, on that regard. There are some things that are not available out of the box. Um, like you cannot do a send request, you cannot set next request. Uh, but what I did add was what I'm also really proud of, the dynamic functions from Postman. Um, you could just add any, pretty much any, um, generated stuff let's, let's see if it's show if it works like that and uh, like random full name oh i'm read only sorry mm, there's strange, also some some nice comments for you yeah. and there's Gertian de wilde who says go tim there's Pepe Cano <laughs> as well from K6 chiming in with his support. Uh, James is saying, nice to see this getting the love it deserves. Much better mm -hmm. experience. Okay. And Tarly is saying, very useful tool. Congratulations. Thank you. It's lots of love in the comments for you. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, but in all honesty, we took it even a, a level further, uh, but maybe I should, maybe yeah, there are, if there are other questions we should talk about or not, I'm not sure. I, I'm interested in this. What were you saying? The dynamic part that you, that you added the yes. parameters? Um, let's see I mean, I you, you also don't have to demonstrate everything. Can we just like <laughs> acknowledge yeah. the fact that Tim, who doesn't even work for K6 or Postman is, is volunteered to do like a live demo about this. Right. So that's awesome. Don't feel True like you champion. have to show us everything. You no. can just talk about it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, um, 
Postman really provides this nice, what they call dynamic variables. And so it, it's, this is a screenshot of it. Uh, so you can, if you use curly brackets random, and then you can say, I want the full name, I want the bank account or anything. It uses Faker uh, behind the scenes and you can oh, really great. make dummy data out of it. So that's really handy if you want to really make, yeah, realistic data without having to use for loops or anything, you just put in the variable. And I was not fully supported in Postman 2K6. So we brought in that support as well uh, to make sure that you could have the full functionality of the dynamic variables attached to that. So yeah, there, there are a number of things we did since the, the last release out of it. And I think dynamic variables was in much demand uh, at, that mom at that moment. There you go. Yeah, and I'm really happy for uh, Mustafa, or the, I'm not, not sure how to pronounce it correctly, because I think he was one of the first ones who pointed out uh, in his blog post about the functionality. So thank you for pointing it out to me. Yeah, uh, now that I think about it, I should have asked Mustafa to be here too. <laughs> oh, I missed that opportunity. Sorry about that, <laughs> Mustafa. <laughs> That's so good about the dynamic variables, because that's that's one of the things that you have to think about when you shift from just a purely automation um, mode, like automation, automated testing mode to load testing is that you can't you then have to start thinking about the data that you're sending to, because if you're trying to get realistic response times, it could trigger caching on the server side if you're just requesting the same thing. So yeah, yeah. it totally makes sense. K6 can already, you can already import Faker with um, K6. So great, great job for, for putting yeah. that together. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very cool though. But yeah, it's like you can use Postman for a uh, your user, uh, your UI, your, you know, your development environment and do all this stuff and then even goes through there and generates some random data. So yeah, that's cool. Indeed. Very cool. Okay. Well, so there's what are the limitations? Cool. <laughs> oh, go on. No, 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 but maybe I'm, I'm going to let you talk first before I, I want to show the, the final piece of what we did. <laughs> Well, just uh, just quickly, I just wanted to ask about the the limitations of this approach that that you see. Not all functions of Postman are supported, so that's that's the downside of it, actually. Um, but for the use case that, that we are using it, we have everything covered. Like you have the the dynamic variables, you have the environment variables, you can define K six parameters. It. Yeah, there was nothing stopping us. I, I think it, if you want to do complex scenarios and you want to do if else situations, that's there is it's not suited for. But that's the same problem you would have in Postman. You, it would be difficult to to make these if else conditions in Postman as well. So that's if you if you do simple tests, functional tests in uh, Postman, you can really easily port them to K6, and then you have performance tests to these endpoints. And in the spirit of the uh, the whole free and open source uh, software, I mean, do you have issues where like uh, you're looking for help? <laughs> Is there any gaps that you're still looking to uh, fill? Uh, um, th there are some bugs I cannot reproduce at the moment. Um, something with XML conversions. Um, but right now it, it feels quite feature complete. I haven't added that much actually. The, the base was already there by the, six, the K6 team members who built the initial uh, library. So I just added some sugar coating on top to make the automation flows much smoother and less manual work uh, intervened or linked actually. Hmm. But if people have great ideas, I, I think they should just make a PR and, and add it to the, to the package. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, did you want to show us something else? Yes, um, I want to show how we went a step further even. Um, because yeah, if you update your API and then you have to update your Postman collection, it then generates a nice case six. But we also use Open API as a documentation tool where we document and design our API. So every change that you do on your API, you need to add them to your API. And then you, so you, you still have to maintain not one output, the Postman collection, but you also have to update your documentation. And I want to flip that around. I want to make the API documentation leading, generate a Postman collection out of it, and generate out of the Postman collection a K6 suite. So that as a product manager, 
I don't have to maintain all these documents anymore. I just maintain one thing and that's my open API and my team or our team then only just need to develop the, 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 the application itself. And it's called a spec driven approach. Um, it's nothing new, but I'm a really big fan of it. And I'm really, yeah, we introduced it a year ago and it, it solved so much and it brought so much quality, quality on, 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 the, on the company level, in our documentation, in our test suites. So that's something I want to share as well because it's, it's so valuable once you get how it works and, and with the right tools and properties, you can really do it. And this is actually where we are right now. I'm, I can also demo it, how it works. So we have, I'm managing an open API documentation. We use the formatting and we validate it if it's valid. And then we use a generated one. And from the generated one, we, we generate documentation. So public documentation, stoplight, studio swagger, you call it. We generate a Postman collection that we can share with our customers and we run contract tests, we run soak tests and we run smoke tests all based on this open API documentation. So, and again, there's no, no contact or no changes involved. We just, we managed the document, the, the spec on its own. And it's, that's really, really something powerful and useful. And I can, I can quickly show how it would work actually, if, if you're interested. Yes, but before you do, a wild Mustafa appears. <laughs> How awesome is that? Let's just say hello to Mustafa, who who just joined last minute since he was already exactly, in the comments exactly. anyway. Yeah. Okay. Nice to meet you, you, Mustafa. You. I'm, I'm grateful that you wrote the blog post uh, so many so many months or years ago. So thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. I I I really felt the need that. Uh, uh, we needed uh, this article so that's why i wrote it in the first place and then uh, yeah I, I found a lot of issues that you solved and thank you yeah. it was a great job you did and uh, yeah. well done thank you and thank you for putting out the the 90 percent of it I, I said that i only had to put in the sugar on the top of it and the no, cherry on the no, top no 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 that's that's not that's not true that's not true <laughs> I didn't develop it in the first place, just to just to clarify. Yeah. Mustafa, while you're here, can you quickly introduce uh, who you are and why we've randomly invited you onto the stream? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, so I am a backend developer at K6. I'm almost three years with K6. If, like It was called Load Impact before being renamed completely to K6 and now Grafana. Uh, I've been a developer advocate uh, uh, when, when the first like uh, idea came into place that we want to have a developer advocacy program. And uh, yeah, I've been a developer advocate for a year and then came back to backend. So uh, I, I, I've worked with uh, lots of these tools and tried to help others because like there were no other resources available. Like, there was this read me on the on the project, and th that was it. No mention of it anywhere. Only the hidden knowledge of everyone inside the company of how to use this tool, but nobody knew it outside the company. So I tried to uh, try to um, learn it from others, specifically uh, Pepe. Thanks, Pepe, from here, and uh, and, and tried to write that. Uh, blog posts and then try to share the knowledge. So that's that's basically it. Great. So we also got a comment. Great with the diagram. Can you share this? Of course I can. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> All right. I By guess way, that's our cue to, to head back. Yeah. <laughs> Please continue, Tim. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to showcase it and then I hope everybody will really appreciate and see the, the power that it brings actually. Um, so, okay. So maybe start with the beginning. I'm gonna close my screens a bit to clean it up. So I have this open API spec that I, it's just a copy of what we just described. So if, if this, this is how it looks, this is documentation using Redocly. You can see it's the K6 open uh, office hours CRM application. You can see the list in there. 
you can see the create, the get. So it's just the, the definition of what the API would look like. This is just a documentation part of it. So I'm using now two tools. I'm gonna use Portman as another package that I built together with API deck and, and Nick from API deck where we can convert the open API to Postman. And from the Postman, we can generate a case six one. And that's really nice because you only need two commands one source file and you have two outputs out of the box. So that's really powerful. I, I found it powerful at least. So I'm going to take my commands quickly. So so if it's okay, um, can you, I'm not, I'm not up to speed with Portman. So it creates a Postman collection already given open API uh, yeah. is something in open API specification. Yes. Uh, that's awesome. So okay. The, the, the was Postman built a package like uh, Mustafa built, uh, K6 built a package where you can convert from Postman to K6. And Postman built a package where you can convert from Open API to Postman. And when I found out, I said, oh, that's amazing. You can you don't have to maintain a Postman collection anymore, but it wasn't, it was missing some functionality. And the, the major thing that I was missing, it, it was just creating the request in Postman, but not the tests. It was not handling the tests uh, mm. of it. It was not assigning variables. It was just taking the Postman request and converting them into uh, open API requests in, 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 into Postman. So you still needed to maintain and modify them. And I said, it, it has to be because an open API documentation or specification, it describes everything. It, the request type, the body, yeah. the properties. If you do it properly, you have all everything in one go. And I said, why not use that to create a test suite, update your variables, do all the dynamic stuff you would expect that to come out of the box. And that's why we created Portman. Um, it started as a PR on that open API to Postman package, but then I I I, I met uh, Nick from um, Open API uh, from API Deck, sorry, and then we came together and we said let's collaborate and let's make a separate package out of it that you can plug in and, and use it to automate these kind of workflows. And it's it's really really I I'm yeah I'm, I'm biased again, <laughs> but I really like it. <laughs> um, so it's, it's no, really it sounds awesome. Question here. May I ask a question here? So have you seen the open API generator package that I've written? Yes, I, I saw that. And that I had the same comments as I had initially. It uh -huh. generates a, a nice K6 uh, script, but it, it's, you still have to manually adapt a lot of things and correct it. Yeah, so but it, uh, sorry that I interrupt you. Uh, yeah. There's this latest PR by, uh, I think, Michael, if I'm correctly remembering his name. So Michael added a feature to, to be able to add certain extension to the to your uh, Swagger or Open API collection mm -hmm. so that it generates everything for you. And if you add examples to, you, to your API output, to your responses, then it can extract those examples and put it in your script so you don't need to modify anything. So you can create basically the same thing you did for Postman. You can do it for the open API. So the new yeah. revision, the new PR, and the new version that is released by William, the maintainer of the open API project, helps you create a complete test from start yeah. to finish with no modification. I think that's great, but we do two types, uh, three types of tests. We will do contract tests, and there we use Newman for it. And we want mm. to use K6 mm. because Newman, it can do schema validation. It can do a, a lot, I think a lot more than K6 can right now. I think it's also the goal of K6 to do all these contract validation. It can, I guess, but I don't, I, I, I treat them differently. I think the, the Newman or Postman has more contract testing capabilities while I think K6 is perfect for performance and load testing at scale, where you only focus on what's the response is the 200 or is not the 200. At least that's how I, how I, how I use it actually. Okay. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, what Portman does, it converts open API to Postman. So I'm gonna showcase that quickly. So it just took the, this open API um, that's here now but then it gives a while to spin it up. There we go. It's converting it. And if things go well, wait, let me check something happening here. Ah, here it is. 
So here's my Postman collection. It's just generated it. Um, it does everything for you. So it, it creates, recreates. So I, there wasn't a collection there. It just recreated for you. And I hope things, uh, it's, it's not showcasing it here. Oh, that's bad, too bad. Um, so it, it just generates it. And if I would import it in, in uh, uh, Postman, let's quickly do that. Um, give me a second to find everything. There we go. So this is the K6 and it's generated by Portman. There we go. And if you, you see, you have the same endpoints. I'm gonna close oh, it. Oh, nice. So the first thing, it's great because you don't have to recreate your Postman collection. You just you just run it from your open API specification and you get, as a result, you get your requests pre-tailored already. Also your, your, your post exercise is ready. So you can see here, it, it inserts a body, everything. I, I don't have to do anything. It just takes your open API and converts it to Postman. Plus it adds a lot of tests already. You see, it does contract testing by design. So it includes automatically a 200 contact application. So it, it just injects your contract test in there. And that's really nice because I only need to maintain one document, my open API specification. As a result, I get all my requests in Postman and I get all my tests in Postman without writing any code. I just need to maintain it in the open API documentation. And wow, now, this now, is really awesome, Tim. <laughs> so, so Indeed. yeah. So keep in mind that this was the flow before. You had to create your Postman collection and add the tests, and then you could generate K6. Now we turn it around. Now we generate Postman and the request, and then we can use that to generate our K6 scripts. Uh, and so we only need to maintain this part in, yeah, or, or in, a, in we only, that's the only thing I need to maintain as a product manager. And the team, of course, they built the API and, and the service and everything. But I get this, and I can focus only on this. And this is easy to manage because it's a YAML. You can play around with. You can you can add endpoints. You can remove endpoints. I just run it. Five a minute later, I have a Postman collection to play with it, and I can run it at scale with K6 uh, doing the volume tests. Um, what else can I showcase quickly here? Um, let me see if I. Can. <laughs> I just I want some to more nice comments here. Yeah. Such an awesome flow, says Khaetian. And James says his mind is blown. And, and I join him on, the, on that sentiment right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, see. that's a full test suite, like from yes. yeah. Yeah. start to finish. Yeah, and like example, schema validation, it comes out of the box. You don't have to add it, yeah. it just does it for you. And the, the richer you make your documentation, the richer your test suite will become. Exactly. And it also, it, it, I, I, Portman, we extended it. You can also do variations. So now it, it just validates if it's a 200, but you can also have it generated 404s and then it will remove items from it. If it's a, a requ required property, it will create a variation out of it. And then you can test if the 404s are not present. And so you get two test suites in one go actually. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. That is that's so awesome. Maybe we can like um, try try and summarize this as we try to collectively recapture our blown minds. <laughs> 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 so uh, I I think that there are two different tools here, Postman and K6, which are really for different things, right? The Postman is is really better for API testing, and as you mentioned, Tim, contract testing, and K6 is better for load testing. And they their features are pretty divergent at after a certain point, but they do have a commonality. And it seems like that's what you've really capitalized on. Mustafa and Tim both have worked on this. And um, 
you, you're trying to make you're, you've gotten us closer to this ideal of having just one set of test suites and it doesn't really matter whether it's autom automation test suites or load test suites or it, it can just be the one thing and you no longer have to maintain two separate ones and that's that's having like the, the amount of time that you need to set it up but also running it right because having to explain this to somebody else is is also a huge deal when when you're not the only tester on your team no nope. exactly Correct. and the nice thing is as a product manager i'm not technically so but i can contribute to it i can i just need to maintain the open api specification and the whole team benefits from anything that i do if we need to add a new endpoint i can design it five not even five minutes later one minute later i can just run it in a pipeline to see if it works and, and that's a bit the cycle of, of, of spec-driven development. You, you put your spec at the center, the spec at the center, and then you design and simulate it, validate it, then you build it, you test it, but the spec is the test driver here. And then you can even run it on production and, and yeah, you do the, the management aspect as well, because then you can monitor it as well based on your API specification. So that's, I, I'm, as a product manager, I'm really proud <laughs> that we pulled this off because that was one of the ambitions when we want to renew our, our API program. Like, how can we reduce a manual workload? What can we automate? And yeah, I'm really happy because it's all open source based. There is no proprietary software involved. We just use K6. It has excellent dashboarding to visualize reports. We use Postman to generate contract testing and manage it, play around with it. And we benefit from such a large ecosystem with Redockly, Stoplight, Swagger as documentation interface where you can display your open API as well. So the, it's, it's, it's almost full cycle or I don't know what's the term for it, but yeah, I really, I'm really happy with where we are right now. It's a good place to be in, in, in an API landscape actually, especially from testing yeah, perspective. It You've taken it a step further, right? And this is no longer just about test suites. It's also because you're you're building on the open API specifications. It's it's all connected, even from not just the development part, but the design part. And yeah. Pepe actually has a, a question about this. He he says, "Can you show us more about the process that updates the APIs? What does it do?" Uh, how do you mean uh, the, the the this flow, this one? Um, which one? Yes, I believe so. The, the powerful thing about it, this can also be because if you have an open API specification, you can even generate clients or server side code from it so that in the end, your, your API service can also just be generated from an, an API specification. There is a, a really nice open API. Um, there's a really nice open API open source project. It's called, uh, I think, open API generator. And then you can just run, you want a C sharp library or an API for that. You just take your open API documentation and you run, you run it and you get as a result, you get C sharp code that you can run in production. And that's also what we use in our company. We have some teams that just manage to build the open API specification and they use that to, to generate C sharp code and have running APIs up and running in no time. I hope that this is the answering Pepe's question. Yeah, uh, Mustafa, Paul, anything you you want to say to Tim? I'm just going to have questions. To say that, uh, yeah, no questions, but uh, yeah, that would come later. But uh, I need to uh, definitely pass this along, this video along to uh, some people that I used to work with because this will uh, blow their minds as well. This is something that they definitely need. Yeah, yeah. To I'm everyone, <laughs> great job, great job. Yeah, great job, exactly. Thank you. I, I, I'm literally speechless because <laughs> I work with all these tools, and I know all the clearly like, not literally. <laughs> well, <laughs> not not the ones that Tim wrote, the ones that we had before, but but anyhow, th this is a great addition to this mix of uh, open source software that uh, that was out there. And that we used, and uh, this is this is basically end-to-end -end testing. So yeah. based on a YAML file, which is an open API uh, specification, you can generate tests <laughs> for your API. You can uh, generate load tests. You can generate, I don't know, like literally everything. Yeah. So and we use, we use this is how end-to-end -end testing should work. 
Yeah. Right? And it's not only testing, it's also documentation. You get documentation, exactly. nice looking yeah. documentation That's out it. of the box, <laughs> a playground with Postman, and, and you get the numbers to back it up with even graphs from, from K6. I, I really like your dashboarding. So if we if you have a customer and they, they're asking about SLA, we just pull up some graphs from K6 and everybody's happy with that. So we, the, the full ecosystem has really matured a lot over the, the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> yeah, this Good is stuff. this is so freaking awesome. Thank you okay. so much, Tim, for for coming on. By the way, he's not even working for K6. He, he's just <laughs> and, and I think you said at one point, oh, I'm a product manager. I'm not technical. I beg to differ. <laughs> this is pretty amazing things that you've put together. There's a bunch of, of comments here, too. James says he's literally waiting for the live stream to end so he can link to the video with a timestamp. Well, let's just try and drag it on for him shall shall we <laughs> um tan says plus a thousand votes and people are are also saying thank you and outstanding almost the holy grail so lots of fans in in comments thank you so yeah. much tim for for joining us i i know we're a bit over time i'm kind of taken aback by how much value you just showed us this okay. is amazing i think we need to have you back <laughs> okay. yeah i'm gonna write a blog post for k6 and one for api deck where i'm i'm going to get more into the details because yeah it's a it's it's a show now so it's difficult to follow but i'm gonna try to write it up and then extend a bit on what mufasa uh, most sorry mustafa <laughs> mustafa did I, apologies i'm really bad with, with it's, names. it's fine it's fine no worries, uh, no then, worries. yeah I, th I think it can be really powerful to share with the rest of the the world that they can yeah maybe use some parts of it or not but uh, I, I benefit a lot from it the whole team benefits a lot from it actually i can i, I can showcase we, this is the pipeline that we use for example so this is we we do tests then we run uh, postman and we do tests and if this 100 percent it gets deployed so it's 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 not just a gimmick. Uh, me showcasing it. This is really happening in our company. So we use it to build it. We use it to have nice dashboards with K six attached to that. So yeah, I'm I'm grateful that that you that you put it out there for us to benefit from it. Thank you. Oh, that's uh, so I'd great. Very, Thank you. Yeah, I, I'd be Go very on, happy Mustafa. to review the article that you want to write. Okay. So. I'll, I'll keep Peppy in the loop and then he'll reach out. Reach out. Of course, of course. Yeah. Great. Nice. Thank you. Thank you as well, Paul and Mustafa, for, for coming on. Mustafa, even though, sorry, I, I should have invited you even earlier. <laughs> thank you, oh, everybody, no. for, for watching. Um, thanks, everyone in the chat. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah, thank you. All right. Yeah. All right. Have a nice See weekend. you all. Alrighty. Bye. Bye.